Do your kids and grandkids crave pudding cups? We're going to make some homemade pudding cups. Hello family, welcome back. If you're new here, welcome. I am Vicki and you're with Grammy in the Kitchen. So we're going to make some pudding cups for our grandkids. So I have my half pint or one cup mason jars and we're going to turn these into pudding cups. We're going to make chocolate, vanilla, butterscotch. So let's get started. So we're going to make the chocolate pudding first. So in here I have a half a cup of sugar, a quarter cup of baking cocoa, an eighth of a cup of cornstarch, a pinch of salt. We have it on a medium low and then we're going to slowly drizzle in two cups of milk. We're going to bring this to a boil and let it boil for two minutes. Then we're going to turn the burner off. All right, so everything is dissolved into the milk. Now we're just going to wait till it comes up to a boil. I can tell the cornstarch is starting to do its thing because it is thickening up ever so slightly. Has not come to a boil yet. Can you see the difference? It's more of a heavy cream texture versus just milk. That's good. It is thickening up beautiful. Now we're just waiting for it to come to a boil. I can see some movement. Oh yeah, here we go. We are at a boil. Now we need to do this two minutes. We're gonna we're gonna keep an eye on the clock. And you want to whisk it because it will go from boiling to boiling over in a heartbeat. All right, two minutes is up. Now we have one and a half teaspoons of butter that I cut up into chunks. We're gonna do one at a time. Should have six pieces.
and we're going to add a half a teaspoon of vanilla. All right, so our chocolate pudding is ready. I'm not ready to put them in the cups yet because I want it to get a little bit solidified so I can put it in a Ziploc bag and squeeze it into my little jars. So I'm just going to pour it into this bowl right now. And I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. Now we're going to go ahead and get working on our vanilla pudding. That's a little complicated. So in this bowl, I have one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch and we need to whisk in a quarter cup of milk. Set this aside and then in the pan, I have a third cup of sugar and a pinch of salt. And then we're going to add the remainder of the milk to that. And we're just going to heat it up till it steams. In here I have two egg yolks. So we have one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. And we're going to drizzle about a quarter cup of milk. We're just going to set this aside. In the pot, we have a third cup of sugar and a pinch of salt. We're going to add the remainder of the one and a half cups of milk. Medium low heat, and we're going to let this steam. We do not want it to boil. All right, so we have three components. So we started off with one and a half cups of milk. So in here we had the cornstarch with a quarter cup of milk whisked together. And here we had the one third cups of sugar and salt with the remainder of the one and a half cups of milk. And right here we have our two egg yolks. So what we're gonna do is once this comes up to a steam we're going to drizzle about a half a cup in here, whisk it so we don't end up with scrambled eggs. We're going to temper our eggs to the milk heat. Once we do that, we'll put this back in here and then we'll add our cornstarch milk. Does that make any sense? I will be putting the recipes in the link below of each one of these puddings. This is two egg yolks and we're just going to whisk in a half a cup of the milk mixture slowly. You want to make sure you don't have no egg clumps in there. Nobody wants to bite into a scrambled egg in their pudding. Trust me. So this is the original milk mixture with the sugar and the salt. We got it back on to a medium low heat. Now we're going to drizzle in our egg yolk mixture. our cornstarch and milk mixture. Now we're just going to cook this until it thickens and turns into a pudding consistency. All right, 
great. That is done. Just like the chocolate pudding, we're going to we're going to add a half a tablespoon of butter cut into four pieces, adding one at a time. and a half teaspoon of vanilla. And just like the chocolate, we're going to pour this into our bowl, stick it in the refrigerator, let it solidify just a bit. We'll be ready to build our individual pudding cups. Now the only one left to do is the butterscotch, which is probably my favorite puddings on earth. Okay, so the butterscotch pudding is a little difficult, but we'll get there. So in here I have one and a half teaspoons of cornstarch. I have a half a cup of milk and a half a cup of heavy cream together. I'm going to add just a little bit to the cornstarch. Make sure the cornstarch is dissolved into our milk. I have two egg yolks. We're going to add that to our cornstarch. So far, nothing has been heated. Whisk that together. And then we need to add this to the rest of our milk. And we're going to leave this set aside while we work on the, the brown sugar mixture. So in the pot, I have a quarter cup of brown sugar, a pinch of salt, one and a half tablespoons of water. We're going to put that on a medium low. We're not going to stir it. We're going to let the sugar dissolve in the water. We're going to heat it to a bubbly and continue to cook for five to six minutes. But we have to keep a close eye on this because it will burn. We don't want to stir it. The only thing we want to be able to do is just swish it in the pan over the stove. So we're not going to touch the sugar itself. We're just going to touch the pan. Whew. Complicated. This is going to give us our caramel flavor to our butterscotch.
right, we're up to a boil. Let's go ahead and set the timer on the stove for six minutes. We are two minutes into cooking our brown sugar. It's very interesting. Killing me not to be able to stir this, but we need to be patient. Can you see it? It's got an interesting. All right, we have one more minute. All right, so it's been six minutes. We need to take it off of the burner. We're going to leave it there for a few minutes. It doesn't give me a time. It just says, allow the brown sugar to cool for a few minutes. So I'm going to give that five. All right, so I'm going to tell you exactly how this says. Add the milk cream mixture to the partially cooled brown sugar, whisking as you go. The sugar will seize and become hard, but don't worry. Everything will melt once the pan goes back on the heat. Return the pan to the heat and gently bring the whole mixture to a boil over medium-low heat, whisking constantly. Once all the brown sugar has dissolved and the mixture is beginning to thicken, switch to a silicone spatula so that you can scrape the bottom and sides of the pan as it thickens. Okay, now you heard that. It says it's going to seize. Because I don't know if you can see that. It is pretty thick. Ready? Oh yeah, it did get hard really quick. Yeah, there is no whisking this in here. Look, do you see that? Alright, it's all going in. Now this was the egg yolks, the milk, the cornstarch, and the heavy cream. All right, back on a medium low. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. It'll say it will come together once that brown sugar heats back up. It's really hard to stir it when it's stuck to the bottom of the pan. We're just going to go with it. I can still feel it on the bottom of the pan, so it's not completely dissolved in here yet. Right, I can start feeling it coming up from the bottom. It is dissolving in the milk very well. If 
and it's very interesting. Just a little bit left on the whisk. Oh yeah, it's coming up from the bottom. Okay, this is going to work. Almost gone from the whisk. It's all gone. Off the whisk. Beautiful. Now we need to switch to a spatula and just keep it moving. And it's going to start thickening up. Who would have thought? It's got a beautiful color. Alrighty, it is starting to thicken up. I'm turning the burner off and again we're going to add one and a half tablespoons of butter cut into six pieces one at a time And one teaspoon of vanilla. Now, if your family loves pudding, whether it's in those little pudding packs that's already made, shelf stable, refrigerator stable, doesn't matter. Or you buy the box of pudding and you add your milk, beat it, and it comes together perfect. No lumps, nothing. But I just want to say read the ingredients. I'm not saying all store-bought puddings are bad for you. That's not what I'm saying. But read the ingredients. If you can't understand a word, leave it on the shelf. We made three puddings, a chocolate, a vanilla, and a butterscotch. And all of these ingredients we had in the house, putting it together was just gathering the ingredients and making it. Butterscotch was a little intimidating, but we got through it. We did this. And we know all the ingredients that are in here. We can read the ingredients, milk, heavy cream, brown sugar, which is sugar and molasses, cornstarch, butter, butter. I mean, we know the ingredients in here. And we know our family will enjoy this, and it's good for them. All right, let's go ahead and assemble all of our pudding cups. So I have a quart size Ziploc bag. And I'm going to dump the vanilla pudding in here first.
And another Ziploc bag. We're going to put our chocolate pudding in here. We're going to cut a little corner of the chocolate pudding. Probably not necessary, but this is the way we're doing it. So we're going to fill it about a third of a way of chocolate. and make a mess in the process, but that's okay. All right, we have a little bit left in here. Now our vanilla pudding. Cut a little corner off. Right now we're going to add the remainder of the chocolate on top of the five that has chocolate and vanilla. Whatever we have left in here. jars just a bit. Okay. The last two that have a little bit of vanilla in there, I'm just going to top them up with butterscotch. Now we have seven healthy pudding mix. We made homemade individual pudding cups and I think the grandkids are gonna love this. I know I'm gonna love this one. Now each one of these recipes I found on the internet. I'll leave a link below on the recipes I use. Now, the recipe that I found on the internet, I actually cut each one of them in half. So, the chocolate pudding, the vanilla pudding, and the butterscotch pudding is a half recipe. Because I knew I was going to make all three of these, and I was going to put them in my mason jars mixed together. So, I didn't need four servings of each one of those. I just needed a half of a serving. Or, yeah, all of them were four servings. 
and I didn't need 12 servings of pudding. So I just cut each recipe in half. So I hope you give this a try. Even though homemade, even though homemade pudding is time consuming, getting all the ingredients, reading the instructions, going through the process, especially the butterscotch pudding. But it is so worth it knowing that we know every ingredient in this pudding and we know the ingredients that we are putting in our family's bodies to nourish them and to feed them and to give them something good to eat, which is more important than convenience. If you don't mind, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you would, please subscribe. I would love to have you part of the Grammy family. And until next time, y'all have a blessed day. Bye, family. Oh, that butterscotch is so good. Oh my God, that butterscotch is so good.